Well guys, things are getting crazy. Today we are talking about one of the most insane things I have ever covered on my channel, and I hope that in a few days this will all be nothing but just a crazy story. Here's to hoping. As of recording this, about five hours ago, a story went public on Twitter about the popular Twitch streamer and YouTuber, your fellow Arab, who has apparently been kidnapped and is now being held for ransom by the largest gang in Haiti. Now from my understanding, this has been going on for two weeks at this point, but it's been mostly kept under wraps until yesterday when a news article came out talking about the situation. This led to Arab's brother confirming this with a tweet that reads, tried keeping it private for two weeks, but it's getting out everywhere now. Yes, Arab has been kidnapped in Haiti and we're working on getting him out. Love y'all, he'll be out soon. Now, if you don't know who Arab is, or if you do and you're confused on how he ended up in this situation, Arab is a large Twitch streamer and basically just internet personality in general who originally blew up for streaming Fortnite, but over the last year or two, he's been changing his niche to travel vlogs. But this is not your standard travel vlogging where you've got a guy walking around a big city or showing off a resort or something of that nature. What Arab has been doing is going to countries and kind of showing off the underbelly of them, parts of the world the media often isn't going to show you. To give you an idea of what I'm talking about, a lot of his content is stuff like going and exploring black markets, living with the Mexican cartel, visiting a country's most dangerous gang, meeting with drug kingpins, exploring the underground drug trade of a country, pretty extreme stuff. And recently, to presumably create content, he decided to go to Haiti. Now, if you're unaware of the situation in Haiti right now, it's pretty rough. In 2021, the president of Haiti was assassinated, and since then, things have gotten pretty bad. There's a lot of gang activity, violent crime is rampant. There's no political statement being made here. Please don't go crazy in the comments. There's nothing political about it. It's not safe to be in Haiti right now. If you didn't know, the U.S. Department of State has this travel advisory system where you can look up a country or a territory, and the United States is assigned a level advisory that they think you should take while visiting that area. Most countries are level ones or twos, with one being exercise your normal precautions while traveling, two being exercise increased caution, but beyond those there are two more levels with three being reconsider travel, and four just being do not travel. Haiti is a level four. Kidnapping in Haiti is a pretty big problem right now, and unfortunately we are seeing that in action right now. So I'm going to try and go through the timeline here as as best as I can. Obviously, things are pretty up in the air right now, but to try and get word out about this, I'm going to do my best. So what we're going to start with here is what is apparently the last video that Arab uploaded before all of this happened, where he's basically just discussing the dangers of what he's doing. So we actually cannot leave to Port-au-Prince until the morning because it's already 6 p.m. And if we leave right now, we'll get there while it's dark. It's about a six hour road trip. We'll get there while it's dark, and that place is completely run by gangs. So you don't want to be dealing with the gangs, even though we have safe passage, we're already approved. All it takes is one stupid gang member holding an AK-47 for one thing to go wrong. So we're not taking that risk at night. We're going to be leaving at 3 in the morning. I just really wanted to show you guys the view from this hotel. We are the only people in this entire hotel. Everybody else is workers, employees, etc because no one's allowed in the fucking country. So there's no tourists here, okay, other than those Royal Caribbean guys. But I have the entire hotel to myself. Look at that view, man. You got the mountain range. You got the sun setting. Okay, you have entire Cap Haitian over here. And we've got a pool, which I wasn't gonna take advantage of, but how many times in your life are you the only person in an entire hotel because the country's completely shut down, no one should be coming in, and you're just a retarded YouTuber. I feel like we gotta take advantage of the pool. So as you can tell, he seems to be pretty aware of the danger of what he's doing. Now for some context, when he says that he was given safe passage to the country, that's not by any government organization. He doesn't have like a police escort or anything. That's not what he means. He was apparently, and I'm using air quotes here, given safe passage by the gangs. Because the reason Arab went to Haiti was to interview the leader of one of the biggest gangs in the country. Now like I said, things are still kind of up in the air right now, but from what I've been reading, Arab was on his way to conduct an interview with 
with a man named Jimmy Cerissier, aka Barbecue, the leader of a gang called G9. Now, this is not some small time gang or anything. This man is considered a warlord and one of the most powerful people in Haiti. And while Arab was on his way to interview him, Arab and his driver were kidnapped by the gang of 400 Mawazo, the largest criminal group in Haiti. Now, from what I understand, news of this started to make rounds on Twitter after this article was uploaded by the Atlas News. Arab was named by his legal name, people put two and two together, and I think this led to Arab's brother confirming that this was true. Not long after this, another travel YouTuber named Lord Miles made a Twitter thread detailing everything he knows, which we're gonna go through now. Some of the grammar is rough, probably because this was written in not the best mental state, so I'm gonna be filling in some words here and there. Try and bear with me, okay? So it starts off by saying, the famous YouTuber, your fellow Arab, has been kidnapped in Haiti by the notorious 400 Mawazo gang 24 hours after entering the country. I've spoken to Arab through the kidnapper's phone. This is what we know. Aaron went in with Sean Rubens John Sakra, a fixer in Haiti who Arab met up with in the Dominican Republic. Sean has also been kidnapped. Sean was the fixer for the excellent YouTuber Chris Mustlis and many others. Arab entered the country 10 days ago to film the riots. Now, if you're like me and you're unfamiliar with the term fixer, done a little bit of Googling and basically it seems like a person who knows the ins and outs of a country, knows what to do, knows what not to do, and is basically your personal helper or fixer for problems that might come up during your stay in a country. You need transportation, you need to get through an area, there's a language barrier, you're trying not to get kidnapped, your fixer is going to take care of those problems. The thread continues, 24 hours later they were both kidnapped, less than two days later I heard from Arab as he was permitted to talk to his friends through the kidnapper's phones. The ransom was $600,000, then went down to $300,000, then went down further to five figures. The US government and state department is very hands off on helping, even though Arab is a US citizen. Arab has been kept in a cage in a place on the eastern outskirts of the capital, Port-au-Prince. His location is known. There is an attempt to pay the ransom, but it went wrong, and truthfully, everyone was out of their depth to help Arab. An exchange went bad slash was done incorrectly, and Arab was not released. Arab is still in excellent spirits. Arab has stated that despite the hardships, he's going to come out with a great video after this, and he should be out in no time. Sean was actually offered to be let go, but he's a great guy and doesn't want to leave Arab on his own, so he has decided to stay. Many travel YouTubers knew of this situation, and we were told to keep it a secret, which we did. There was an anonymous group chat discussing Arab's kidnapping, which potentially leaked the info. I heard about this and put out a warning to them saying not to do it. Regardless, someone outside of us YouTubers leaked it to the Haitian news a few days ago by their name, not stating them as YouTubers. Now that the info is out, we might as well try and get the facts straight. I have already seen some rumors out there. If it is not coming from my mouth, Chris Muslis' mouth, Tommy G Returns 2's, or Arab's own social media, controlled by his family, do not trust the information. We will give updates when we can and will help in any way we can. Do not start a GoFundMe or donate to one. There are a lot of scams out there and nobody who isn't aware of what's going on to try and raise and deliver ransom money. So this seems like a pretty insane and unfortunate situation. As I'm sure you would expect, there's been a lot of people on Twitter saying this is nothing but a publicity stunt. Me personally, I don't really feel like that's the case here. Not only because Arab has uploaded himself going to similar places. I mean, if you look through this guy's YouTube channel, I think it's pretty clear that he's actually going out and doing this stuff. But also because I think you'd have to be an absolute idiot to think that you could actually get away with this and pull this off. The amount of coordination and cooperation you would need to fake a kidnapping at this scale is simply just not possible in the age of social media. Somebody's gonna let the cat out of the bag. And that's not even beginning to consider the legal ramifications of doing something like this. I don't think this is fake. Now for a moment, I did kind of understand why people might be saying this because this is Arab's brother's most recent tweet. The inside the mind of escaping Haiti series is about to be insane, which is kind of a crazy thing to tweet when your brother is like, you know, actively kidnapped. But hey, maybe he's just trying to get through this with humor. I don't know. I'm inclined to believe this is real. Like I said, I'm recording this like five hours after this hit Twitter because I have a horrible sleep schedule. So I don't have much more information than what I've already said. By the time this video is released, there will probably be more information because I'm not uploading this until tomorrow or well, today, but later. Hopefully, by the time this video was uploaded, the situation's done. Arab's on his way home safe, and this is just a crazy story he gets to tell down the line. Because I really do feel for this guy, this is a terrible situation for him and his family. I've seen a lot of people on Twitter being kind of heartless, giving the guy crap, saying he shouldn't have gone knowing the situation, and, I mean, okay, yeah, that's, that's kind of fair. If your goal is to make your job visiting dangerous places, stuff like this is something you have to consider. But, I mean, I think he has. His last video was him talking about the danger of what he's doing, you can recognize that a guy had a role to play in putting himself in a situation and still have sympathy for him being
being in that scary and unfortunate situation. I mean, seriously, if you go on the hidden replies of the tweets talking about this situation, it's a bunch of people saying he deserves it. What did you expect? What do you want us to do? And it's like, nothing. All of these tweets are saying, don't do anything. We don't need your help. They're just spreading information about someone they know getting kidnapped. I mean, seriously, how miserable do you have to be to get angry and snarky about somebody being upset that their brother got kidnapped? But then again, it is Twitter. So, you know, I guess it makes sense. Well, guys, what do you think? Do you think this is real? Like I said, I just can't see this being some attempt at a publicity stunt. That would be absolutely insane. Obviously, for Arab's sake, I hope I'm wrong. I think purposefully nuking your career is probably better than being kidnapped, but I really don't see that being the situation here. If it is, I don't know. I'll, I'll eat a shoe. And you've got my word on that. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and walk on over to that subscribe button and touch it. It's free. It won't cost you anything. But for now, that's all I have for you today. Bye. <laughs>